So my name is Greg Scott. I'm an enterprise account executive with Scope AR, and we are an augmented reality company. And our, our whole premise is our products want to make anyone an instant expert. So we serve a lot of companies in maintenance repair, field service, manufacturing, uh, lots of industrial applications. And the people that we, we work with are increasingly dealing with a complex array of equipment that gets more complicated every year, and they have less time to learn it and less time to get trained on it every year, and their clients expect them to be faster and faster at it every year. So by the time they show up to the job site to get the work done, they're already behind the eight ball. It's not a good spot to be. So we support them through smart instructions. If you came by the, the demo table today, you probably saw this, right? You can pre-author those, and then uh, AR-enabled video calls. But today, I'm not gonna talk about that stuff. Um, we are a commercial software company. I do not have a technical background, so I'm gonna talk about something that we see all the time, and that's things that kill AR initiatives in enterprises before they really get off the ground or out of the innovation team. So our executive team has done these kinds of projects for about 10 years or so. They started off doing them as uh, fresh, uh, pro services engagements purely. Right? So every single one was custom built from the ground up. After a while, they productized it, became a software company, and that's where we are today. Um, the first thing we've seen, though, is a lot of companies will task people, go out and become the expert on this technology. So if someone goes out and becomes an expert on AR, to become the VR expert, the IoT expert, and suddenly every problem the company has can be solved by AR or VR or IoT, right? So they've essentially become a hammer, so everything to them looks like that nail, as the saying goes. That's a really tough spot to be in because you start to find problems that maybe aren't the problems the business needs to be addressing, right? So the the way we've seen clients be more successful is when they actually go out to the business and they shop for problems first before they even talk about technology to business stakeholders. So by the time they've narrowed down that problem set to what really matters to the business and they've narrowed down the, the possible technologies to solve that, they've actually already kind of built in ROI because they know the business cares, they know ARs on the short list, and suddenly get in their project out of the innovation team and deploy it into the business, which is almost all the people we talk to, they're measured in some way on getting technology out into the operational field. This matters to them. Second, you'd be surprised how often this comes up, is picking projects with no baseline KPIs. Right? If you're going to measure ROI and everybody's doing prototypes and we're going to measure the ROI based on a prototype, the we, we first question we ask is, okay, how do you measure that today? A lot of companies say, well, we don't. Well, why not? Well, we know, that we know the value is there. We know that solving will mean improvements. Unfortunately, we're at a point where the technology, the person who's signing off on that is probably not the person playing with it, understanding with it. They're a few levels above, and this is a line item to them. And if they're not able to see quantitative improvements between them, that project's probably not going that far. So what they're really looking for is an ability to take the abstract, especially at the innovation and R&D levels, take an abstract concept and build some quantitative metrics around it. And if you've done the first thing really well and found those problems that are a real challenge, narrow down AR to the short list, that, sh that use case should have some baseline KPIs and some measurements you can do around it. If it doesn't, it's probably not a great use case, right? You'll end up uh, kind of shopping for problems again. This, this, I think, applies to just about anything you do uh, in, a, in a large enterprise. You need to include your stakeholders really early and really often, and probably earlier and more often than you actually think you do. So those stakeholders are your workers, your managers, your executives, your business sponsors. If they're not involved, that's a long, either a very, very short road where you get really excited about a project, you talk about it all the time, you bring it up at the next you know, monthly innovation meeting, and it's dead on the spot. Or worse, Right, you spend a couple of quarters working on that project, bring it up at the annual innovation meeting, and it's dead on the spot. Right, you spent tons of time and resources on it, hasn't gone anywhere. So it's super important to build your supporter network because a lot of a lot of I mean, myself obviously we're a commercial software company, so I'm the de facto champion for AR. Right, but if you're talking about AR internally, you're not the only champion the company needs. You need champions because we, as we we always say, people have to sell for you when you're not there. And that includes you guys internally, especially if you're working as an innovation team and you're consulting to the business or an external consultant consulting to parts of or operational divisions. People need to be enabled to be your champions when you're not around. And you do that by getting them engaged early and often, finding the problems that matter to them to solve, and then showing them that AR is the best technology for that. This one, we see, we've seen this popping up more and more 
Is anybody following what happened with ODG recently? That's no. So, yeah. So, we have clients that have hundreds of ODG devices out in the field, which they had committed to six months ago, a year ago, because they thought the glasses were such a, such a strong contender, and, but they didn't have a good business application for those, but they've invested in the technology, and now ODG is selling their patents and not releasing any more glasses, which is, and, and putting no more funding behind R&D, which uh, could be indicative of a couple of things, but it's got, it's got a couple of our clients going to back to the drawing board as to their deployment methodology for AR. So it's really critical, and this is really tough in AR, and, and this is one of the most challenging things is the hardware side of it. I know we talk a lot about that as the presentation around how many devices are out there. It's super challenging, but the business case and the use case and the ROI and the hardware and the software, they all have to complement each other. You can't just pick one and then try to line everything up linearly after that. It's got to all work together from the beginning in a really interconnected way. And the last thing we've, we've been seeing a lot of lately is um, don't underestimate the unspoken human concerns. Uh, I had a question earlier today where someone said, well, if I, if I were to buy this, how do I know I'm not buying myself out of a job? Right? And that's a concern that a lot of people have, especially in the manufacturing sector, where typically innovation has been synonymous with outsourcing or automation, neither of which has been positive for the, the jobs that people are uh, hoping to secure for their future. So you really need to go out and wear multiple perspectives that your stakeholders have, not just your executives looking at this from the top down, like what's the return on this investment we're gonna get, how long will it take, what resources do I need, what new capabilities do I have, but you have to look at what the people who are gonna be using it, what are they gonna think, because they probably can't say yes to green lighting your project, but they can definitely say no. Right? So if you really wanna get that project out into the field, they have to see the value for them. And a lot of what we talk about is, it's not about changing how they work or replacing them. It's about giving them a new set of skills and a new set of capabilities. They can do things faster. If they're a field service company, they get fewer callbacks, so their first time resolution rate goes up. That's typically important to them, right? They can do more jobs, their utilization is better. All these things are really important, and then none of them come back to them having to be replaced. Right? So that's five.